Right, Dwight, Dwight Taylor. You know, we're going to talk about crime and whatnot. You said, I see you on Facebook. I'm just saying, I see you on the social media protesting against the music industry. What's that all about? Absolutely. Uh, Mark, you know, uh, the uh, mission that we are on as far as the music, uh, you know, you have uh, young people being influenced, I mean, by this derogatory, this, this degrading, disrespectful, controlling music. We actually, it's the lyrics and the music. And uh, we feel strongly that uh, it's playing a very major role in the psychology of our young people on all these killings. They are being influenced by something. If you listen to the lyrics and some of this music, you will see for yourself. You will see that the lyrics that they come up, I mean, that they say as far as uh, keep your Nina on you. Uh, calling the women the bees, the whole, I mean, it's, you know, it's, and see, and then the young people hear this, and then what they do, and then they emulate what they hear. They go out in the streets, and we feel that, uh, like I said, uh, Clear the Airways Project is something I've been working with for about seven years, and uh, that's why we do that. And listen to you talk about the, the, uh, the music. You're right. When I was a kid, they used to have Marvin Gaye sing, Let's Get It On. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, in eighth grade, I sort of knew what Let's Get It On mean. <laughs> but as you get older, you really know what Let's Get It On right, mean when you're a little right. bit older. But I'm saying we've always been influenced by the movie, music. I mean, mm -hmm. Chuck Berry had a song talking talk about my dingling. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so the music always been kind of rescue, and right? And not just the music, uh, Mark. Uh, yeah. The videos, the graphic, you know, the graphic nature of the videos yeah. is, I mean, the movies and, I mean, it's just, it's influencing to our young people. And a lot of people don't believe that it's playing a, a, a role in what we are seeing, a materializing, this, you know, in our society. But it is, it's playing a major role. But Mr. Taylor, if you have a good parent, and a lot of folks, ain't, and there's a lot of people, unfortunately, they're not blessed with wonderful parents. But if you have a wonderful parent, at least one, they would put the music in context or just say, like I did with my children, you can't listen to that stuff. But you know what, Mark? You know, uh, a parent or parents cannot monitor their children 24 hours a day. Right. Now, when they're on the, the internet, I agree, there should be some kind of parental control over the internet on what they're watching, what they're downloading. Right. But guess what, uh, Mark? Uh, Power 92 and uh, WGCI, they are responsible individuals. Clear Channel and Brock uh, and uh, Crawford, they should be more, even more responsible and not allow these, this garbage to be played across the airwaves. Well, should it, what about, should they play it at night, like after 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock? Can they play the, the, more, the adult stuff? Well, perhaps, but uh, I really don't think it should be across the airwaves, period. Because if you listen to it, considering we are averaging, uh, I think, about a killing a day in Chicago. Right. I mean, that's sad. Probably, yeah, more than now, that. Now, considering that, you know, like you, you have to wonder, why are they allowing this kind of garbage to be played across the airwaves. They say that's only one dead child. What do they care? Because <laughs> yeah. they say uh, all the people that listen, only a small percentage are really affected by the music and going to do something crazy. So we're capitalists. We'll take our chances. We're always going to lose a few as we're making money. You understand, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but I'm, now, now uh, like, okay, I hear a lot of times about it being a one-parent household. Yeah. Now, that one parent may be doing all he or she can do. That is when uh, we should be more responsible, especially the churches. They should be more responsible about addressing this issue, about the, you know, this garbage being played across the airwaves. They were out there today, I'm sorry, yesterday, on uh, 35th and uh, Grant at the McDonald's. The reason we picked that McDonald's because that was the first McDonald's that we went to about five years ago, and we were successful. We set up a meeting with uh, Crawford Broadcasting. And they met with us, and uh, they, yeah, yes, mm, they, they met, met with us wow. in uh, downtown Chicago. Wow. And they, uh, they just couldn't see our demands being a, a reason for them to change their programming. Right. So we continue protesting at McDonald's and other sponsors. That, uh, sponsor, that, that, uh, if the sponsors go, they may, they may change their right, ways. Right. Yeah. That's a good move. But also is that when, when my children were small, I didn't let them listen to music. I'm I, sorry. I hate, I hate to, sorry if I have to apologize for this. I had them listen to white songs and white stations because the white music, it was like Disney Channel and stuff. Absolutely. It was like kind of wholesome. It didn't get too nasty. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Why, why, why African Americans? Why we got to be so nasty? You know, uh, <laughs> and dirty. Right. Like and funky. <laughs> like you said, you don't have to apologize. Right. Uh, 
as a parent, you just want your children to listen to something that's productive, that's something that's not going to influence them and, you know, to do things that they shouldn't do, right. illegal or bad. Because I know, know it's going to have an influence on your kids. Yeah, you cannot let your children, people understand that they cannot let their children listen to black music. Black music. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hate to say it. Yeah. And then people say, well, your kids ain't going to be black. Well, I'm willing to take that chance because I don't want to listen to black music when they were growing up. Yeah. Well, you know, the, okay, the type of music your children listen to is really going to influence them on the, in the direction they go in. And it's, you know, there's no doubt about that. I, I'm going to ask you a question about raising children in a second, man. Let me, let me go to the next episode. circle back to that because I, I was that was one thing I was going I harped on for a while I was going after the radio stations years ago and uh, they weren't liking it and I I, I, I got you know what I got tired because you're the only person screaming and you get tired yeah that's yeah. the problem you're the only person screaming it. now we were talking about the music in the, in the, in the first episode Mr. Taylor but I, I want to talk about uh, raising children because you impress me you make me feel like a bad parent because you raised daughters who were much smarter and more accomplished than my children. So I'm jealous and I hate you. But talk about your wonderful daughters and they, all these master degrees. And, and they were, were, they, were they born and raised in Gary? Uh, they were born, let me see, one was born in uh, uh, Arlington Heights. One was born, in, and then let me see, the other three were born in uh, Chicago. But they, were, they went to Gary schools, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, you know, all of them went to Gary schools. Gary schools? Yeah. Now, when I, when I think of Gary schools, I think that... You're doomed to failure. You go to the Gary School. So how did you raise college graduates coming out of Gary School? Well, you schools? know, Mark. You know, uh, first of all, I have to give much props to uh, the Upper Bound program. That's right, at Purdue. All four of my daughters went through that program, and that program supplemented their education. That was, you know, from the Gary, uh, my community school corporation. Without that, I'm almost convinced that they wouldn't be where they are today. That's right. Now the upward. Upward bound. upward bound. I've heard about Upward Bound. Is that that starts in high school? Yes, yeah, starts in high school. It's a college preparatory program where it, you know they uh, accumulate uh, college credits. That's right. By the time they get the credit uh, to college, they already got a few credit hours. And so it's a college prep all four years. A college prep program. For three years. Three years. Oh, you can't join until the sophomore year in high school. So you saying if they didn't go? Now you're a great parent. We know that. Uh, mom, your mom. I mean, their mother's a great parent. But what, what, what would your daughters be? Would you think they would have gone to college and complete college and got these master's degrees without this upward bound, pro, upward bound program? Oh, you know what, Mark? My oldest daughter, Shavonda, she came out, she came out number one in her high school class, number one at Horace Mann. And do you know when she got to Purdue, she had to retake classes because she could not prepare. So although you you came out of the Gary School, mm -hmm. Gary School, top of your class, but you still had to take remedial at, at, at Purdue, which is, which makes sense. Okay. Yeah, because most students are not prepared for a place like Purdue. Purdue is a really good school. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. But keep in mind, uh, our education was supplemented with uh, the Upper Bound program. Okay. They gave us, you know, she took classes. So if it's just Horace Mann, just the Gary School, she may have dropped out of Purdue. I mean, I mean, it, I mean she, she wouldn't be ready academically. Exactly. Wow. So you said they all got master's degrees too? Yes. All your four daughters? Okay. Uh, the youngest one, she's an entrepreneur. She has a master's degree. Uh -huh. uh, my next one is the uh, deputy prosecutor for the, in Marion County, Indiana, Indianapolis. Uh, she had, you know, she, she's a lawyer. And, mm. uh, the next one is a, uh, she worked for the Department of Children and Family Services. She has a master's degree. And my oldest daughter works in human resources uh, at a hospital and she has a master's. And she. <sighs> She was a trailblazer, you know. See, you know. So you, but so if, um, so you would say definitely if you have your your uh, son and daughter in, in high school, try to find one of these programs like Upper Absolutely. Bound. Especially if you live in a, a poor area like Gary, you know. I mean, the uh, the school system here is. I mean, can you imagine anyone uh, get, uh, like coming out of college to come here? You know, with their family and start a family in Gary. I can't see that. So you saying, okay, wait, say, so you saying, no offense, your daughters graduated from Gary High Schools. Mm -hmm. Would they consider coming back to Gary to raise their children? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And uh, and that's the same for Chicago. I don't think the, I don't think the, the community lead uh, the community leaders don't really care, do they? No, they don't. I, really, you know, I, you know, I'm, I mean, I have a couple of relatives that's, you know, they are politicians, and they, you know. I, I just don't see the concern, the necessary concern. And then they're wondering why, you know, we have babies getting killed every day almost in Chicago. I mean, 
I would think that the pastors and everybody else would get together with the politicians and shut Chicago down because if it was, if it was the white kid getting killed every day, the city would be shut down. But why, why aren't the pastors and the politicians, do you think they should take a moral stand? I'm not a religious person. I, I went to, my parents made me go to Sunday school, so I got a lot of that, which is actually good. They should take a moral stand. Absolutely. I mean, it's a necessary stand. I mean, because if not, you know, this is going to continue. And all you hear is people saying, I'm getting tired of seeing this. I'm getting tired of hearing about our babies dying. And what are they doing? They're doing nothing. I mean, you know, I've been out in the streets. I've been, uh, we have protested at City Hall here in Gary and Hammond, McDermott, you know, for racist remarks he made about, you know, our kids learning the uh, voting process, you know. So... <laughs> We, you know, we have been out in the streets. But the church making it a moral stand, because I'm not a religious person, but you would think I'm a Jehovah Witness if you saw how I, I conduct myself as, as, until the lights go down, <laughs> until I get in the house, because no one knows what goes on. Yeah. Behind. Well, they, with the Internet, they do know what goes on behind closed doors. Yeah. But what I'm saying, though, is that, that you, you have to have them take a moral stand. And I would tell, I would tell any young person, if you, can, if you can try to do it, do not have any children. Why don't the pastors have a, take a moral stand and say, let's delay have, I said delay having children until you're ready. Abstinence, that's right. Abstinence, no doubt. Yeah, well, abstinence, you, you serious? <laughs> I, I, know, I, I know what you're saying. I'm all, yeah. yeah I, I, well, yeah, I, I, when I got married, I, understood, I learned all about abstinence after I got married. Well, Keith, that's another joke. But, I mean, but like you said, <laughs> also about morality. I mean, our young people are going to, see, they're not going to learn anything about moral ethics if their mom or their father is out in the street, you know, slinging drugs yeah. or doing drugs or drinking. How, why should we, how, I mean, how can we expect them to do anything productive? You know, I mean, how can we expect them to even learn, you know, go to school and learn? You know? And that, don't, you, don't you think, Mr. Taylor, that's why the politicians and um, the preachers or the relig religious leaders seem not to care? They say, you know what, them folks are low income, they're part of the underclass. You can't save the underclass, Mr. Uh, Taylor. they done, man. But it, you know it's what, over, man. And, and you know what you just said, uh, Mark? That's unfortunate and for a pastor to think like that. You know, considering he's getting his, he or she is getting their tithes every week. You know, they're getting money. You know, you know from the community. And I mean, I think I truly think that they should be held accountable for what's going on in this community. But all these killings, these shootings, it's just ridiculous. Now, here's, here's let me let me impose my value. You you raise uh, girls in the Gary Public Schools. Do you think if we put an emphasis on every all the students doing better in school, everybody can't get straight A's like your daughters? But uh, D's and F's, like I always say, are unacceptable. You think we put a better, a more emphasis and show kids how to read, how to study, that we can end a lot of this drama in our neighborhoods? Well, you know, first I think, I, th I honestly think that we have to deal with the schools and how they are teaching our children. Mm. But then again, the, but then again, the foundation, their foundation plays a, you know, a pivotal uh, role in what's going on. Mm -hmm. Other words, it's at home, they have to be taught at home what, you know, what to do and what not to do, you know, you know, the right thing. That's the moral stand, though. Yeah, I mean, you got to yeah. go to bed. Yeah, don't, right. And don't listen to that music. Can't stay up all night you know, watching TV and then go to school you know, the next morning sleeping in class. You know? And we said earlier, we sh we, uh, children, uh, no nobody's children should listen to black music. I hate to sound, I mean, it's most of it's nasty. It sounds good, but a lot of it's nasty and disruptive. That's I mean, uh, right. you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, you don't, you don't, I, what am I, I keep going on. But what should we do, man? Is it, is it a lost cause? 